probably know somebody who plays uh, video games. Maybe you even know somebody who plays video games a little bit too much. Maybe the guy or girl sitting right next to you right now is secretly playing Candy Crush. Uh, have a look. It's okay, it's okay with me. So uh, I played games for a long while and I knew a guy who played video games extensively. His name was Stealth and he was actually my hero in the game. He had a thunder sword, as you can see. He was leading groups of 40 people and he was defeating the biggest dragons. So he was doing quite well. Until one day he had a little bit of a breakdown and he told us that while he'd been building up status and, and performance in the, in the game environment, his life outside of the game had actually been suffering. He did not do so well in school, he did not see his friends outside of the game anymore, and he was not participating in any sports anymore. So is he addicted? Um, that's an interesting question. If we look at media reports, we tend to see very negative uh, impressions of video games. And more often than not, they also uh, attribute the cause to a single party. Either the parents should be controlling their children better, the video game industry is simply making these massively addictive games and they should know better, or the children themselves s simply lack willpower and it's their own fault, you know, control yourself. So that's three perspectives on that subject. Well, from my background as a, as a gamer and a researcher myself, I, I have some information on the subject. And well, firstly, some hard data. Uh, we did research in a group of 14-year-old uh, students and looked at their gaming behavior, basically. And what you see is that, first of all, not all of these kids are actually playing games. Some of them don't play. And this is less and less every year, of course. But if they do play, some of them don't play the online games that are played with others. And it's specifically these games with th which are played with other people, which are incredibly time consuming and most often associated with problems. So if you play these online games, you don't have to play them for extensive amounts of time. So we look at that as well. And if you remove those players who only play for maybe an hour, maybe two hours every night, or not even every night, you end up with a group of approximately 7% who play four or more hours per day. So that's what they report anyway. But playing extensively, if you're still doing quite well in school, maybe because you're smart or otherwise doing well, doesn't necessarily mean you have an addiction, right? So we can look at, um, are these people actually reporting addictive symptoms? Uh, are they having problems controlling their behavior? Should, do they want to be playing less and are they unsuccessful in doing so? Are they experiencing problems with homework and going to bed in the evening? Well, you, you already see it coming. That's only 1% who actually reports that. So, small problem, nothing to worry about, perhaps. On the other hand, if you look at it from the perspective of the happy online gamers who are playing four or more hours per day, one in seven of them is actually experiencing problems. So most of the intensive gamers will actually know somebody in their group of friends who is not entirely happy with their own playing behavior. So that's another perspective on the same numbers. Now from the perspective of the parents, um, very often the reaction tends to be extremely restrictive. And one thing you hear a lot is unplug the computer, uh, switch off the router, hide away the console at night, just get it out of there. And actually, from a psychological point of view, and based on our research data as well, extremely controlling parenting can be very counterproductive. It actually elicits defiant behavior on the uh, part of the child, and they end up playing more or being generally frustrated. So that's not a very helpful approach for the parents. And looking at the game industry, you might be tempted to think that they crank out addictive game after addictive game, or so it seems. Well, actually, it's quite hard to make a good game, and many companies fail. 
However, obviously, a small group of companies does succeed in reaching a large audience. And if they do, they gain access to an incredible player base and sophisticated tools to monitor players' behavior. So small changes they make in the game, and they can do that, might result in millions of people playing, for example, 15 minutes more on a daily basis. So that's a very real and, and hard influence they have over people's behavior. And well, if you want information that they're actually capable of this, look at notification systems or try to fill the first level of Candy Crush. It's uh, pretty much impossible. So, but I think that the lesson to take away from this is that if you have this power over people's behavior, there's a certain responsibility attached to that. And that's a debate we're often not having. So looking at it from the perspective of the gamers themselves, well, they're often angry. They, they feel misunderstood. And w one person I know is a professional gamer called Sushi Licious. He's uh, fairly good at StarCraft II. So he plays a lot. And uh, his parents were always complaining about his gaming behavior. They referred to it as him junking away behind the computer until one day a taxi cab showed up to drive him away to Korea. And yeah, so his parents were fairly surprised. And that's the moment they realized that this hobby actually extends beyond the boundaries of the bedroom. And not every culture thinks about it in the same manner. So yeah, everybody become a pro gamer, perhaps? Well, unfortunately, it's rather hard to do that. It's like winning the lottery. So many people will not be able to become a professional gamer, and that's not so, uh, something you would recommend to people. And what Leonard is now actually, after retiring as a professional gamer, is actually involved in is promoting responsible gaming. So and enjoying the gaming behavior, but also keeping it in balance with the rest of your life. Now to summarize these uh, three perspectives, what, what we see for the parents is they tend to become angry, they blow up, they become larger and larger, and they start destroying things. So what does that remind of us? Well, the Hulk, basically. And that's not an optimal position, I think. Maybe they could try to be a little bit more like Iron Man, who is fairly interested in technology and always tinkering with it. So for the parents, open YouTube, see what your child is playing, and dive right in there from a position of genuine interest. Looking at the position of the video game industry, I would argue that with enormous power over human behavior comes some responsibility, pretty much like Spider-Man. And from the gamers' position themselves, they're often in their cubicle, gaming, feeling angry. Well, what would really help if is is if you would come out of the cubicle every uh, once in a while and do some advocacy, explain to people what you're, what you're actually doing, why it is meaningful for you, and also why sometimes it's not as much fun as you would expect. So that can be helpful there. And to, sum to summarize the overall uh, picture, there has always been panic about new media. When radios first appeared, people thought, well, those persons are never leaving the house anymore. They'll be listening to radio indoors all day. Big concerns. Television, the same. Now we have gaming, and in a few years, we'll have virtual reality, no doubt. But also for the gaming, we do see that some people are sensitive to fleeing into these online worlds, spending a little bit too much time. It functions basically like a fish trap. The further you go in, the more committed you become to your online status and your online friends the less well you sometimes do in the surrounding environment. So that's an issue. So what can you do? Well, maybe you know somebody or you will encounter somebody who plays a little bit too much, and then it's your job to reach out, talk to that person about their hobbies, inquire in an honest and uh, non-judgmental way what they're actually doing, and most optimally, get them out of the house for some board games or drinks, and Maybe, just maybe, you might prevent them from swimming into the fish trap a little bit too far. Thank you.